Hello. Have you ever wondered how I got into electronics and also computers? Well, when I was younger, my parents brought me several electronics kits, and I have one here. This one here. Now, whilst this wasn't actually my original one, this is one of the kits I actually had back in the day. And they contain many, many projects that you can build with the aim of them being fun, but also educational. So in this video, we're going to take a look at this and try out some of the projects. So let's get it onto the bench and take a closer look. I do remember this kit. I think I got it for Christmas one year, and I think it was probably the first one I had that actually had some real actual IC chips on there. It's funny that it says it's recommended for children 10 and over because at 10 or maybe 11 was when I got my Amiga, so I don't really know. Anyway, taking the lid off. Ooh, if only you could smell that. The smell of old vintage electronics. Ooh, it's so crusty. Now the first thing we see is an instruction booklet, and removing this, we find a bag of wires. It wouldn't have come with a bag of wires like this, they would have all been separated into their own little groups. And here's where I keep assorted lengths of wire. I remember being excited to try all the different projects to see what they did, and I learned so much from these. But like most things that came at Christmas, batteries weren't included. So we'll start by adding some. Taking a quick tour, well, up here we have a bank of different resistors. Next to them, we have two silicon diodes. Here we have some kind of antenna, and then a germanium diode. Then four transistors, two PNP and two NPN. Below this we have a range of ceramic and electrolytic capacitors. No, they don't need recapping. And then to the right of those, there's two chips. The top one is a quad two input NAND gate chip. That means it has four NAND gates on the chip and each one has two inputs. Below that one is a dual JK flip-flop chip. And these are quite complicated, but they do some really clever things. Above these chips, there's two transformers meant for audio use and a relay and connections for the battery. But there's still more. Along the front, there's a range of controls, lights and sensors. And starting from the left, we have a tuning variable capacitor, a variable resistor with an integrated switch. Next to it, some kind of meter. Then we have a seven segment LED display, six general purpose LEDs, a simple two-way switch followed by a push switch, which is what this red lever here is, and then another LED. Then we have a CDS cell or light dependent resistor and a speaker. And finally, connections for the two terminals on the front. You get a whole bunch of components in this kit and I counted just under 60. And this book contains 200 different projects too, each designed to teach you the various components and how they work. So let's take a look at that. So here's the manual, and upon opening it, we get a long list of all the 200 projects you can build. Also notice that this was made by Radio Shack. Now from being in the UK, I only knew of Maplin back then, so it's really interesting for me now to know where this kit had actually come from. Some of these projects are purely educational, and some of them are actually quite useful, and some of them are just for fun. So I'm going to pick a few of these later and try them out. Now turning over the page, we get a helpful guide to all the parts in the kit. Now as a kid, looking at this page was very exciting. And although to be honest, I already knew what most of them did, it was still exciting to see what was there. Over the page again, and we have a getting started guide and no one ever reads this stuff, so we'll skip over that. And then we end up with pages with the first few projects on them. Now one thing that's worth noting is after the first few projects, the picture at the top changes to a circuit diagram. After all, this is supposed to be educational and each circuit introduces new parts and explains how the circuit works. You also might have noticed this strange list of numbers at the bottom of the page. This is a bit like a dot to dot and it tells you the list of the connections you need to make with the wires. Scrolling along the right hand side is the entire list of projects in this booklet. And the list may look a little bit long and daunting at first, but I don't remember feeling that when I originally had this, so maybe it's just older me. And as you can see, the project lists is broken down into lots of different categories, including the basics, some radio circuits, some sound effects, random number generators, logic gates, and some projects just for fun too. So I'm gonna pick a few of these that stand out to me and we'll have a play with them. And we're gonna start with the electronic birthday cake. <laughs>
say, I don't remember it being quite that tedious to put these together when I was younger. Maybe I was more excited back then. Now, the LEDs on the front aren't very bright, so I've added three LEDs to the top so you can see what this is doing. And if I blow into the headphones, you can see that the harder I blow, the more LEDs go out. Kind of like a reverse VU meter. Interesting. I suppose it's a bit like those magic candles you can get on a cake that relight themselves. Let's have a look at another project, and this time I'm going to build the electronic roulette game. You know, it actually requires quite a lot of concentration to build these up. So many wires going in so many different places and it looks like a spaghetti mess when it's finished. It's a wonder they still work. Still, they still seem to be more reliable than typing in code listings from magazines back in the day. Anyway, let's have a look at what this actually does. It's not that exciting, but it's quite clever I suppose. You press the button and it counts up 1 to 4 several times. Each time the count gets slower and slower and slower until eventually it stops on a number. Kind of like a ball spinning on a roulette wheel. You wouldn't have thought something as complex as this could be built with a kit like this. And I guess whoever came up with the projects had a really good imagination. And I wonder how they selected the parts to include to provide as many different experiments as possible. It's quite impressive really. Now. On to the third and last project, and I'm going to try one of the radio projects. Now I remember when I was younger building lots of crystal radio kits, and they don't need a battery or a power source, just as long as the antenna is really really long and it's got a good ground connection. Now back then, and probably not ideal in a thunderstorm, the window in my bedroom used to have a metal frame, so I used to use that as my antenna, and then I used to connect the ground to the metal pipe on the radiator, and I would lie in bed at night listening to the radio. Now this circuit is slightly more advanced, it's the one transistor radio. Part of the fun with these projects was when they didn't work. And I learned a lot about circuit schematics, tracing each wire to see if it went where it should have done and where it should have gone if I'd put it in the wrong place. And in this case that was true as well because I wired up the radio circuit wrong. Now with those changes fixed, I'll show you it working. But to do this I've had to take it upstairs away from my computer and I've strung out a long, long cable to act as the antenna and wrapped it round the walls in the room. I can't believe how noisy that is! Thing is, when I originally built one of these back when I was younger, we didn't have Wi-Fi, we didn't have LED lights everywhere with interesting power supplies and switch mode power supplies everywhere, and that just shows you how much electrical noise there is around us. So I'm going to kill the power to the entire house and try again. Well you could 
just about hear that, although I really couldn't make out what they were saying. It's a shame kits like this don't exist anymore. Well, at least I couldn't find any. They certainly taught me a lot of the basics when I was younger, and when I'd completed all the projects, I used to pull the kits apart and pull all the bits out and everything and make my own creations with them. I know it's easy to say a lot of these projects could be developed on an Arduino or something similar, and sure, that's true, but then you really miss out on the fundamental basics of how things work. There are kits around these days, and they tend to lean towards a specific theme, and I don't feel like they have quite as much educational value as perhaps kits like this did. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed my sharing of this trip down memory lane. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.